Let's now get to the serious stuff, though. Peter Bell, who is always very generous with his time as Executive General Manager of Football at the Fremantle Dockers, is uh, on the line and happy to talk to us today on The Late Trade. Peter, thank you. No worries, Dan, mate. Good to be with you. Yeah, mate, we do always appreciate it. You, uh, you do make yourself readily available for, for us on The Late Trade and other programs around the, the Late Tradio uh, Network, so uh, the Trade Radio Network, so thank you very much. No worries at all. When uh, Wednesday of next week comes around will Lockie Short still be a docker it's a great question not really sure um, with that uh, how it sits currently is um, uh, Lockie advised yesterday that um, for a few different reasons he, he was interested in exploring a move back to Victoria and, and um, say that he'd, he'd like uh, potentially to play at, at Collingwood um, so we're open to listening to, to, to Collingwood and go through that process but you know, in the conversations with Lockie as well which I had with him and were held in a, a really um, open and comfortable way, there, there's a strong possibility also um, that he'll be playing in 2024 for us. So I uh, can't give you any clarity on it, Damo, but that, that's where it currently sits. OK, so let's just go behind the scenes as best we can, and we understand that there'll be confidentialities attached to your conversations that you won't be able to broadcast. But when were you made aware of it? Were, were you blindsided by the need to, to move out? And if you can, as you answer those questions, just explain to us, please, the trigger nature of the contract that Lockie had himself executed by way of reaching a, a certain amount of games this year. Yeah, start with the, the contract part. Yeah, he hit a contract trigger during the year for an additional uh, year on his contract through to the end of 2024. Um, we've also had and been in discussions with, with Lockie and his management um, around a, a further contract extension on, on top of that for an additional uh, couple of years as well. So um, that's been ongoing. Um, we were advised uh, on yeah like yesterday morning um, that, uh, that that Lockie was after being back in Victoria for a period of time was interested in a move to Collingwood. Um, look, with the context and background that you do have, um, and the nature of trade period, you, you're never um, completely surprised. But I mean, and I, I want to be really careful here as well. But, and this is not critical of Lockie, but we've had conversations around him where he's given a commitment to to play through uh, to his contract to continue those negotiations. So. On that basis, I guess there was, a, there was an element of surprise that the request came, given that you know our list manager had had those conversations with him and his manager, but acknowledging clearly that circumstances can change and change pretty quickly, and, and that seems to be the case with Lockie. Yep. If you were to engage in conversation, and, and again, you've sort of indicated you will at least have that conversation with Collingwood, what is it you're going to be seeking back? Yeah, well, not appropriate to go into exactly you know how, how we value Lockie and, and potentially what we'd expect, it's more, you know, we'll listen to what Colin would have to say, but, I mean, you guys would have spoken about it and seen, for those of you who, who follow Fremantle closely, he's a pretty valuable player and a highly performed player and a durable player as well, which is why, you know, a, a team and club of the calibre of Collingwood would be interested in him clearly. So, um, you know, he, he's a big part of our plans and he's, he's under contract um, and, and, you know, a really valued teammate. I'll just ask you one more before uh, Josh Jenkins uh, hits you up with uh, Liam Henry questions. But Collingwood's obviously got pick 18 by way of its latter position. Is, is that the pick you feel might be a, appropriate? Yeah, look, I'll, again, Dame, I'll let, I'll let Wolsey, David Walls and, and Graham Wright, uh, you know, work for all that and, and for Collingwood to make um, their intention to know. And last and we'll let that process take place. So it just feels uncomfortable to talk about, you know, exactly... Um, what we would see as being a value for Lockie, given that we're not comfortable really with, with losing him in any, res- in any respect anyway. Peter, Josh Jenkins here. Hope you are well. Uh, your period looks like, trade period looks like being a little busier than you would have anticipated, of course, Lockie's, uh, you know, uh, his request to, to be traded to Collingwood. But the one that came through a little earlier was Liam Henry. He's a talented young player, someone you used uh, great draft capital to, to, to bring into your footy club and we I think there's no doubt no one would question we haven't seen the best of him. Uh, talk us through, I guess, your club's feelings when, when you learned that Liam Henry was seeking a trade away from your club. Yeah, this is a, a different situation, I suppose, Josh, in, in the fact that you know when a player um, is coming out of contract and you've got all kinds of different contract offers in front of the player, for the best part of the year and they don't sign on, you, you get a pretty good indication mm. that, hey, a move could be on the cards. Um, I think Wolsey summed it up really, really well um, in, in, in uh, Stephen Silvani bid on, bid on Liam, who was one of our NGA concessions uh, at, at pick nine. Um, it's interesting, 
with with Liam and others. I, I think the the industry or, or the, the the general football follower can sometimes think that you know all players when they're drafted they're ready to go from day one, which is which is never the case as, as you guys know. You know the, the exceptions are obviously players like you know Nick Dacos and Will Ashcroft and the like. Liam was a talented player or is a talented player. You know I think he was 66 kilograms when he walked into the place, and then there was COVID, so. We and he had to build his body. He had some um, knee issues he had to get on top of and, and then further just build and develop his game. And that he's worked so hard at that, along with a whole lot of people at the club for a number of years. And we're just starting to see the fruits of his labours and our labours with, with his performance through the second half of this year. And it's in that context that we're obviously disappointed that he's elected to play football elsewhere because he's worked hard, we've worked hard, and we think that you know what, what transpired in the latter part of the year will become a baseline for Liam moving forward, and that's a, a high-performing winger in the AFL. Uh, you guys know the landscape better than anyone, but is there still a, a period, for both players who have requested moves away, there's still a period for you guys of of real frustration and, and, and even anger when players who, you know, in Liam Henry's case, you know, you've said you've put a lot of time into building his body and help him, help him, uh, him improve away from the field so that he can start to blossom. And you get a, a few of those green shoots and then he looks to leave. And then when, uh, in Lockie Schiltz's case, you know, under contract. So is there that strong, still that period of, of real frustration and, and anger that, that sets in before you have to get down to business? Yeah, they're, they're, they're differing, differing cases, and you know every case is different. Um, there's there's some layers to Lockie's situation that that we understand. Um, I wouldn't use the term anger. Uh, frustration is fair and, and disappointment. Um, that, that I think that's a fair way of putting it, and that's what every club deals with when they have players who who ask to leave or, or see greater opportunities elsewhere, depending on the circumstances, of course. But yeah, I think anger would be a bit over the top, but definitely disappointment. Yeah. Hey, Peter, Phil Davis here. I've got a question more about retention. Obviously, Lockie Schultz being a Victorian, um, you know, he mentions personal reasons and the like. Liam Henry, you know, country WA. I guess with, with all the movement that's going on and players having more flexibility over the time, are you starting to feel a pattern that you have to draft more Western Australians to try to look after retention later? Or have you thought about how that looks with player movement becoming more and more liberal and off the back of the three-year contract for first year first round draft picks does that mean maybe you can keep going down that victorian and interstate path yeah it's interesting phil um look look we've lost we've lost some west australians as well um mm. uh, for, who have sought opportunity elsewhere and and that's that's the big one when when players see uh opportun- greater opportunities elsewhere and and perhaps more as a depth player at your own club then sometimes those moves are made with the support of the club and and that's certainly the case with a number of moves we've made you know, it's not appropriate for me to talk about which players we viewed as depth players, but um, over the past few years, but we've certainly supported some players in the moves to other clubs seeking opportunity. Um, look, we like to draft West Australians as a, as a general rule, but we can't shut ourselves off from talent across the nation. Western Australia produces around 18% of draftees on average. So that's a, a pretty big percentage of where, where else the talent might lie around Australia. So. Uh, and looking at our list, you know, we've got long-term commitments from players from all over Australia. You know, Sarong, Brayshaw, Young, Frederick, you know, Amos, he's a West Australian. Brennan Cox has just signed on on a long-term contract and he's from South Australia. So we've got a number of guys who are committing long-term to, to the footy club and we're really comfortable with the, the list that we're building at the moment. But for, the, for Phil's question there, and everyone's got a reason individually for, for wanting out of, of your footy club. But obviously, Liam Henry, Lockie Schultz are added now to Chera, Neil, Lobb, Akers, Logue, Kiel, Hogan. There are others. Is it a concern for you that there are en masse a lot of good players wanting out? No, I think you look at them case by case, Damo. And, and look, I think every club would say this every now and again. There's one or two you'd love to keep, but that's certainly the case for us as well. There's also a large contingent that, that go with our support as well to, to seek greater opportunity. And there's players at the time, uh, and I'll use Chez as an example, who, who we loved in his time here at, at Fremantle and is a great teammate and really solid character. And at the time, we're thinking, ah, oh, you know, we really don't want to lose him. And, and he's a great player and a, and a great character. But we're able to turn uh, the pick from Adam Cherry into Jai Amos, who hits 40 goals as a 19-year-old key forward. And looks um, and really, really good. Hard, it? Yeah, and looks yeah. Really, and they're really hard to find. So change in and of itself um, can sometimes offer you great opportunities as well. And look, Phil's well equipped to talk about it. GWS have had a, a for a variety of different reasons, but 
you know, a high turnover of players as well. And yet they were unbelievably competitive and, and keep uh, more often than not performing at the spiky end of the ladder. Peter, I imagine it's a term you really dislike, but uh, Sean Darcy's a pre-agent for lack of a better term. Any any progression there, any movement there? Of course, uh, you've got an interesting ruck situation. You've got two really valuable ruckmen, both who have seemed like they play their best footy uh, in the ruck, Sean Darcy, of course, has been you know one of your stalwarts for the past five or six years. So, uh, you guys would 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 be very very eager to get his contract locked away long term. Yeah, we are, and we're in those negotiations, Josh, and and they're going well. But, you know, they'll take a bit of time, obviously. But we've been in uh, through David Walls, really strong dialogue uh, with Sean and the family, and and we know that Sean in particular is really excited about the partnership with Luke. Um, you know, I see the narrative, of course, that Luke is a really talented uh, ruckman, and, and that he is, of course, but we also see him as a talented midfielder and, and, and forward, and, and we'd love to further explore how that tandem can work as offering something unique and different in the RFL. It's not everybody's cup of tea, I understand that, but we think it's really exciting, and we're looking forward to exploring that and confident that things are progressing well with Sean. Peter, Phil here again. I've got more of a strategic question. With, obviously, the CBA with that significant uplift being built in, in terms of looking forward and, and planning, have you guys been able to carve out a lot of space going forward and uh, will you be looking to use that um, with you know Sean Darcy and actually be able to really contract people into that space or have you had to lock up a fair few players with the triggers that say they move with the CBA? Yeah, we, we've, we've locked up, a, as I mentioned before, a, a number of our what we consider to be our key components long term. Um, that was very difficult because of the, um, the element of the unknown around the TPP. Um, so you work off a lot of a percentage uplifts that get applied to some players and not to other players because every management company is a little bit different. Um, it, it's not to our advantage for me to talk about our TPP capacity uh, yeah. publicly, but really comfortable with the job that David Walls and our team here at Fremantle have done. Um, and uh, and feel like we're in uh, a really good place moving forward. But just back on to Lockie Shields, is it stay at Fremantle or go to Collingwood, or is there a potential other option for where he may end up in Melbourne? Yeah, look, it's an interesting one, isn't it, Damo, when, when, when players you know, want to move back to uh, home or a particular state, that, that then they identify the particular club that they want to they want to move to. So that's the extent of our conversations with with Lockie. And you know, again, we, we had a conversation, and, and he was perfectly comfortable with the the proposition of returning to to Fremantle and playing out 2024 at least. So he's understanding the situation. We're understanding of his situation as well. But an acknowledgement of that circumstance is not, um, you know, a, a, an agreement to, to trade or facilitate a trade as well. And he's fully aware of that. It's in a good place. Like I said, we'll, we'll listen to Collingwood and, and we'll take it from there. 